Okay, so dear friends and followers, the next lecture is from the Haskell Power Duo, who has brought countless improvements to the Haskell ecosystem. Who doesn't know and doesn't use uh, Summoner, the tool that has created thousands of Haskell projects, literally. Um, having said that, I think they don't need no further introduction. Let me just add that they have come up with, um, with a new exciting tool, uh, Haskell Static Analyzer, STAN, which will soon take the world of Haskell by storm because that's what their software does. So ladies and gentlemen, Veronika Romashkina and Dmitry Kovanikov, let's give them a warm applause. Thank you so much for your kind introduction. Uh, we are delighted to be here today and speak about the project Dmitry and I were working at for a while recently. Uh, STAN is a Haskell Code Static Analyzer. The project uses a lot of very complicated and uh, exciting uh, features and approaches and we are thrilled to share with you the knowledge uh, we gain on our way of developing uh, static uh, analyzing uh, tool in Haskell. Uh, here is a plan uh, for today's uh, talk and uh, the topics uh, we are going to cover here. Dmitry will start with the overview of static analysis and then we will focus mainly on STAN, uh, its features, techniques we used for uh, development and for its work and we'll show some examples of its work. So, static code analysis is a generic term, basically any tool that analyzes the code without actually running it can be considered as a static analyzer. But usually when people say static code analysis, they mean a tool that finds vulnerabilities in the code and provides solution to those problems. For example, PVS Studio Analyzer it's a famous static code analysis tool for C, C++, C Sharp, and Java. And on the slide, you can see an example of problematic code. And PVS Studio helpfully provides uh, the explanation of what's the problem and what's wrong with this code. Uh, also, uh, such languages as JavaScript and Python benefit a lot from static analyzers because they uh, help to maintain good code quality in these languages. And if you are curious about static analyzers for your favorite programming languages, you can check out the static analysis repository at GitHub. It contains a list of static analyzers for different languages. So Haskell didn't have a true static analyzer before as a separate tool. So the question why only now? Uh, first, GHC already provides lots of sanity checks such as uh, pattern match exhaustiveness checking and then use the variables. Second, JHC generates a lot of boilerplate code for you. It has a powerful deriving mechanism which allows you to save a lot of keystrokes and not write boilerplate code. And boilerplate code is usually the code where you have a lot of copy paste errors because you mindlessly copy paste one code, you just change something and then you have an error. But if you don't need to write boilerplate code, you don't have errors in them. Uh, also, Haskell itself by design is a very safe language. It doesn't have implicit uh, casts of, of variables or manual memory management. Additionally, static uh, types eliminate several classes of errors. Uh, then uh, there are other uh, static analyzers tools such as HLint Leader and then provide some suggestions on top of JHC and they fill some gaps. So there were not so, such urgent need to write static analyzer. And uh, finally, uh, the last but not the least, is uh, it was really difficult to write Haskell tooling before because you want to be as powerful as GHC, but you don't want to rewrite the whole GHC and GHC wasn't really easy to use. It, wasn't, it didn't expose all that information, but now there are such modern features as high E files, uh, which will be covered later. And it's now possible to write static analyzers much easier. And I will give uh, some more motivation on why you might still need a uh, static analyzer despite all the features in the Haskell ecosystem. Uh, let's look at the following function. It takes a list and it uh, first compares the length of the list with some number. So this function is perfectly fine. It compiles, but it has two problems. 
The first problem is that it hangs on infinite lists, and the second problem is that it leaks memory on huge lists. But fortunately, there are several solutions. For example, you can pattern match an underscore colon for 20 times to evaluate list only partially, or you can implement a custom uh, function which checks size and compares to the number without evaluating the full list, or you can use an external library for size lists. Or you can use some fancy tricks like generic lens and inductive naturals to compare lens of the list lazily. So uh, not all of these solutions are one line changes. And uh, while linters can suggest like actionable advice, how to refactor your code automatically, it's not always possible to just change your code automatically. Uh, all, also, all these solutions have different trade-offs. And uh, the static analysis job is to inform developer about the problem and to provide guidelines on how to fix the problem. But it's up to developer to decide which solution to use, how he or she want to handle the problem. So uh, just really uh, the, the, job, the tool job is to inform developer. Also, if we want to provide such analytics only for lists and not for other data types, we need access to type information. And if tools rely only on parsing and don't use type information, uh, they can't provide such useful checks. So that's why we created STEM. Uh, let's not talk about STEM itself. Uh, STEM is implemented as a command line tool our idea for this project went through several rethinking uh, moments. We started with a, a Haskell SRCX library, which is a parsing library for Haskell uh, IST. Uh, but later we um, implemented a static analyzer uh, as a source plugin, a, a GHC plugin. Uh, that was a brand new feature back then, uh, which uh, helped us to had have more control over a uh, GHC uh, compiler. Uh, but finally, uh, we uh, came to the current implementation as uh, the implementation through the HIE files. Uh, and it's uh, actually the most convenient one at the moment for tooling in Haskell. Uh, though uh, our implementation vision changed through time, uh, we always had uh, these goals in mind. Uh, the primary goal, of course, is to uh, spot uh, all known uh, vulnerabilities, uh, such as performance and uh, issues, anti-patterns, and general uh, issues with the code that possible to recognize with the power of um, static analyzer. Um, with the issues as well, we want to provide uh, solutions uh, so user can use that to improve their code. Uh, but uh, of course, sometimes uh, uh, some vulnerability have different solutions, so we uh, leave it uh, to user to decide what they uh, want for their project. Um, also, we want this tool to be useful for people uh, who only start their journey with Haskell, uh, so we can teach some of the best uh, practices on how to write Haskell code. And also we want to produce uh, really helpful information uh, for users and comprehensible output. So user can use it um, depending on uh, their needs. Uh, how stand work? Let's see the overall picture of that. Uh, first, uh, we need to read all existing uh, user configuration. For example, it uh, includes uh, files location, some uh, filters uh, or scope uh, filtering, and some other things. Uh, we support uh, different ways to do that. We have uh, TOM files, uh, we have CLI arguments, and also environment variables. Uh, all three can be used together for convenience. Uh, which makes this very flexible for users. Uh, to combine them together, we are using the trial pattern, which we came up with. Uh, this is the approach that's similar to a partial optional monoid pattern, but we also store uh, some context with the data. Uh, it helps us uh, to make better reporting and troubleshooting. And uh, for users, the output is more robust and clear as well. 
Uh, the next step is the input to consuming, uh, consuming stage. Uh, we need information uh, uh, on the high E files, and also we, uh, we get information from Cabal files to get the better and wider picture of the, uh, the entire project. Uh, we, for this stage, we needed uh, as well to create uh, one library uh, to get the extensions uh, for Haskell projects, as this information is available uh, for JHC at compilation uh, stage, and uh, it doesn't go into high files. So high files doesn't have that. And extension library uh, combined analyzes information about uh, all uh, extensions used in the project. Uh, after that, uh, we need to analyze all that input information and catch all vulnerabilities for the project. We call this stage tree uh, traversal, as we actually need to walk uh, through the uh, high IST. And the final stage, after all information is gathered, uh, stand output it, uh, outputs it in the user desired way. We have a pretty and informative terminal output, uh, also more detailed uh, HTML report, and additionally, we provide a machine-readable JSON output. Uh, let's uh, see how you can use that, actually. Uh, it's very easy. See, it's just one command. Perfect. <laughs> you don't need to create any additional uh, configuration files or look through tons of documentation, uh, but you can um, configure it later as well. Uh, <clears throat> So before we dive into the tool implementation details, let's uh, establish some terminology first, which we created for stand specifically. First is inspection. Inspection is a one analysis check uh, provided by stand, and it contains some meta information. For example, here's example one inspection. It has a stable reference ID, which is unique and it's not going to change. So you can always refer to the inspection by this ID. It has a short name, so you can quickly understand what this inspection about. It has a more detailed description of the problem it catches and uh, what it can what can be problematic. It has a severity to tell how problematic the inspection is, whether it's just a stylistic issue or it's like really severe error. And it has a list of categories, which you can think as a list of tags, some meta information to distinguish and categorize inspections. And um, the most important inspection has a solution. So in this case, the inspection about uh, using uh, slashes in hard-coded passes variables, and this can le lead to errors on when your project compiled and run under different operating system. So you need to use a file pass appending operator from the file pass library to solve this problem. Then observation is a specific vulnerability found in the code. When you run inspection against your code, it produces zero or more observation. And here's one example from the stand output. So you can see the module CSS, uh, some meta information about this module. You can see it has one observation and below the information about this particular observation as uh, the ID. ID is stable and it uh, depends on module pass and line change and line position is not changing. And some meta information about corresponding inspection uh, for this observation. Also, the highlighted problematic code and from the module and the solution. So in this case, there is defined operator, uh, which doesn't have explicit fixity, fixity declaration. And it's uh, usually better to write always explicit fixity declaration to avoid some maintainability and unexpected issues uh, later. Uh, let's have a closer look at high files now. Uh, Stan heavily uses uh, this particular feature. Uh, what is a HAE file? HAE stands for Haskell Interface Extended. Uh, it's basically as a term uh, to call JFC generated files which, with uh, HIE extension. It contains uh, information about Haskell source model in some compact way. Uh, specifically, it has the following information. It has uh, the uh, HD source code uh, encoded as the interval tree, uh, it has information about uh, nodes and their annotations, uh, which is a uh, string tags that are helpful for us to uh, look uh, for particular nodes. Uh, we also, it also has efficiently encoded types of all expressions and sub-expressions 
uh, re-exported uh, in identifiers, model paths, model name, and model source code represented as a byte string as well. Uh, usually people can confuse it with Haskell ID engine, which has the same acronym, uh, HIE, but it's absolutely not the same thing. Um, also, HIE is a, a fairly new feature. It, it became available only with Jersey 8.8 .8 and upper. Uh, you may ask uh, how you can uh, use, uh, you can generate high files for your project. It's uh, very simple. You just need to specify uh, JRC options for that. Uh, one way to do that is to add these lines to your Cabal file and uh, it will generate uh, high files for when you uh, build your project next. Um, we encourage you to use these options for all your projects since more and more tooling depending on these files and using it for uh, its work. Um, and to understand whether how the HIE files look like, uh, let's first look at uh, some small example uh, for understanding. If we take uh, this function, uh, put str function which outputs a string, uh, then we can get uh, the following representation in high IST. Uh, each node in this tree uh, represents some uh, element uh, of uh, this function declaration and it's pretty straightforward to understand it, basically the AST. Uh, but uh, in reality, high files are a bit more complicated uh, than that. It has additional information which we can use uh, for analysis. Uh, it has such meta information as uh, source files, uh, names, uh, positions, some annotations that represent the type of the nodes and some uh, identifiers and re-experts. Here is uh, the example of a simple uh, function uh, and it looks like this in high e. We, we uh, simplified some information, has much more, but for basic understanding. Uh, yeah, high files is a neat way to structure information about source code. And uh, for analysis, we need uh, a way to retrieve this information in the most efficient way. For that, we came up, uh, we decided to use patterns uh, that we match against a higher IST. Uh, to get uh, full information about particular node or a group of nodes, we need to be able to match it with a specific type or uh, we need to know how we expect the IST for that node to look like. So uh, it makes two types of uh, patterns that we are using it, uh, types patterns and AST patterns. Uh, let's first talk about type patterns. Uh, in high files information, uh, about used files, uh, or oh, sorry, used types uh, of expression and sub expressions uh, is uh, presented in a separate section in some kind of a map. Uh, this information is absolutely valuable for uh, analysis. And uh, here are some use cases that we can actually use this information for. Uh, for example, we want to uh, catch all lens uses, but only on list as length is slow and partial for, for lists. Uh, another example is uh, foldable methods for maybe either and UFO can be a bit confusing, so we want to catch that as well. Uh, also, uh, partial you know, uh, methods, but uh, for everything but uh, integer and natural, we also know, uh, have to know the type to uh, distinguish between uh, these types. And um, for example, partial from list for non-empty. Um, let's look how high files uh, organize type information. Uh, we have a function here that takes a non-empty string and produce int, which is a length of um, this list. Uh, in high file, uh, type will be represented uh, as the map from uh, some uh, numbers uh, to types. Uh, here is the number zero uh, is uh, corresponds to the string type 
uh, one is uh, associated with a non-empty parameterized by, by zero, which is the index of string. Uh, and in the same manner, uh, the three is a function from one to two. It's exactly the type of that function. Basically, uh, each time uh, we see the existing uh, type, uh, we reuse it for in, in map later. So we know exactly what types are, are used. Um, and here is uh, the data type we use for represent these patterns. Um, you can see how it uh, corresponds to what we just saw in the map. It's a pattern type name um, uh, of a string and an empty here, function pattern. Uh, we also have uh, matching anything and other constructors of booleans, which we will speak about a bit later. Uh, and uh, of course, to make it uh, more clear, uh, we uh, have um, a idea cell for readability purposes. Uh, it's very handy. You can look at the example and guess what uh, type uh, will be in there. You can see int pattern and something like arrow, either pattern of string and a question mark, which could be anything. So I would say it's int uh, to either string anything. And yes, it is. It's pretty straightforward to understand. Um, and finally, we need to function uh, to match our patterns. Here, uh, the function takes an array. Uh, it's just a high uh, representation of map we were talking about for efficiency. Okay, now let's talk about AST patterns. We need to match not only types, but also the AST nodes. For example, to match functions of specific types or combination of elements or even more complicated patterns. And similarly to the pattern type, data type, we have a pattern AST, uh, some uh, type which has constructors such as uh, constant for numeric and string constants or specific function with a specific time. Uh, you can see that the pattern type data type is reused here. Or we have a constructor to match the set of nodes and the list of children. Because in high AST, different nodes distinguish by the string annotations, and we need to similar way to match such nodes. So to give a few examples, we also provided some sim some IDSL for defining patterns, and there are some building blocks which are translate directly to the high AST structure. For example, for function application, there is node with one pair of strings, and the function application and its argument are children of this node. Or for the range from A to B, there is node with also one pair of tags, but there are different tags now, and the children also. Uh, the range boundaries are children of this node. And the more complicated expression, for example, range from zero to length of something, it's probably a problematic expression because you may want to create a list of indexes for some list, but this list contains uh, one redundant index. So this is off by one error, and we may want to catch such error. And the pattern for catching such a state looks like this with range from exactly number constant zero to application of a length pattern to anything else. So you can see how with our DSL we can define patterns and later we just need to match that, uh, those patterns against our code. But we also want to match more complicated uh, expressions. And for this, we created a um, Boolean type class in the final tagless style to define more complicated patterns. So this type type classes interfaces for methods. It has a question mark, which is anything, swell card, it should match anything. It's a negation, which matches anything that doesn't match by the given uh, pattern. Or it's all pattern choice, it match any of those two arguments. And and pattern, it should match both. And of course, pattern type and pattern AST data types are uh, instances of this type class. And to give a few examples how we use this to write a more complicated pattern. So first, uh, length hands on infinite lists, but we, length function can come from two places, either as a method of uh, foldable type class, it's polymorphic uh, method, or it's a specialized function from the GHC old list module. So uh, we, depending on that, we create a pattern that matches either one of them. Or for type patterns, we want we know that function suck is partial for all types except integer and natural, and the pattern captures this idea. So the pattern is not uh, for this type, is not a function from integer to anything and not a function from natural to anything. So uh, it will 
the type for this function will match all other types. Or a more complicated pattern, for example, usage of file pass operator for creating URLs. So apparently some people use this operator to append URLs, but it's an unsafe because if you compile a project on Windows, the slashes will be different. And here's a pattern for capturing such expressions. It uh, basically tries to recognize whether the constant is a, looks like HTTP URL or it's a variable that looks like a URL name. And it's when it's applied to, when it's used to be this operator, we uh, tell about the problem. So once we created patterns, uh, we now need to match AST nodes against our patterns and we uh, use, need to traverse the tree. For this, we use the visitor pattern and visitor is basically a value is a function from a high AST node to some stateful action with visitor state. Um, this state contains all information we collected in during tree traversal and the function which uh, visits the AST recursively, it's very simple. It takes a visitor, the root node of the whole module and it starts recursively with the root by visiting node and then calling itself recursively for all children. So this function then will accumulate all information in the final visitor state. And the pipeline for analyzing module looks like this. First, we need to create a set of inspections for each module. Uh, as mentioned before, Stan provides flexible uh, configuration, which you can uh, tell which inspections to is disable or enable in specific modules. So for different modules, there can be different inspections and we need to define this information first. Then we need to in initialize a single visitor object from the set of inspections. Basically for each node, uh, actions are running depending on what inspections are in scope. And then we need to traverse the module highest tree using the created visitor and collect information about this module. And finally, once we create a visitor state, we need to post process it and uh, get all the information from it to produce final observations. So our previous approach was a bit naive at the beginning. We traversed AST for each inspection separately each time from the root. And it was uh, a bit slow on some projects. For example, we tested Stan on uh, Agda, which is quite a big project, uh, Haskell project. It has more than 300 models and more than 135,000 uh, lines of code. And the previous approach ran for 30 seconds. But then after we wrote the visitor pattern, we improved performance twice. Now the whole analysis factor takes 15 seconds, but of course there are more room for improvement. Uh, besides uh, main functionality, Stan also provides few other features to make it even friendlier for uh, users. Uh, it includes instant access to all inspections lists. You can get that either via terminal or at the web page. Uh, also, uh, we uh, we provide um, TOML to CLI and CLI to TOML configuration translation, so you can reproduce your configuration anywhere. Um, another uh, 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 feature that we provide is a binaries uh, in every release for all three operating system, and as well we uh, support uh, Homebrew for Mac. Mac Max and uh, Ubuntu apt. Um, here is uh, the demo um, of a uh, report you can get with Stan. Uh, it contains some more information about the project and uh, some statistic about that. Uh, also, of course, it has a list of all observations found and uh, also information about uh, the configurations that were used to run this particular um, one and uh, there is also a helpful section uh, with a explanation on inspections and some other more clear meta information about how stem works and produced features uh, yeah but this is not all we are going to improve stem even further and we already have some exciting features on our roadmap uh, it includes opt-in inspection to make stem a bit uh, less opinionated. Uh, we also would like to provide users to make their own inspections through the configurations we already have. And of course, we will add more inspection on potential bugs and performance. We already had a lot of idea in our issue tracker. Uh, we want to investigate some time in uh, 
and see if we can uh, improve um, the, uh, space leaks and fatality issues or through STEM. We want to provide CI and ID integration and much more. Stay tuned. And here are some uh, links and information uh, you can check out. Uh, it contains everything you need to get started with the project and to learn a bit more about that. Also, you can uh, see the issue tracker and uh, add your feature you would like to see or, or ask for help. And um, that's all from us. Thank you very much.